Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're watching this, chances are you're either diving into the exciting world of solar powered or you're already in it and maybe a little frustrated. And I get it. One of the absolute biggest questions and frankly, one of the most common mistakes I see people make is when it comes to sizing their solar system. Specifically, figuring out how many solar panels you actually need for your inverter. Many of you might think, Oh, I have a 3000 watt inverter, so I just need 3000 watts of solar panels, right? Wrong. And that wrong assumption can lead to wasted money, underperforming systems, and a whole lot of head scratching. Today, we're going to stop that mistake in its tracks and show you the correct way to size your solar system, specifically focusing on how to match your panels to your inverter for maximum efficiency and savings. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll have a crystal clear understanding and be ready to design a solar system that truly works for you. Section 1. The Myth Busted Inverter Wattage Panel Wattage Let's kick things off by busting the biggest myth out there. Your inverter's wattage rating, whether it's 3000 watts, 5000 watts, or whatever, does not directly dictate the exact amount of solar panel wattage you should connect to it. Think of your inverter as the brain and the bottleneck of your solar system. It converts the DC electricity from your solar panels into usable AC electricity for your home. While it has a maximum output capacity, you absolutely can and often should connect more solar panel wattage than your inverter's rated output. Why? Because your solar panels rarely, if ever, produce their nameplate wattage. Factors like temperature, panel degradation, shading, and the angle of the sun all reduce their actual output. You want to oversize your solar array relative to your inverter to maximize the amount of time your inverter is operating at or near its peak capacity throughout the day, ensuring you capture as much energy as possible. Section 2. Understanding your load. The true starting point. Now, before we even think about panels or inverters, the true starting point for any solar system design is understanding your energy consumption. You wouldn't buy a car without knowing how many passengers you need to carry, right? It's the same with solar. You need to know your load, that's how much power your appliances and devices use. Grab a pen and paper or open up a spreadsheet. You need to list every appliance you plan to power with solar, their wattage, and how many hours per day you use them. For example, a refrigerator might use 150 watts and run for 8 hours a day. So that's 1,200 watt hours. Your TV, lights, computers, air conditioning, everything. If you don't know the exact wattage, you can often find it on the appliance label. Or better yet, use a cheap power meter or clamp meter to measure it directly. This step is crucial. Don't skip it. Once you've done this for all your appliances, sum up all those daily watt hours. This total number is your average daily energy consumption in watt hours. This is the cornerstone of your entire solar system design. Let's say for example, your total comes out to 5000 watt hours per day. Section 3. Calculating required solar panel wattage. The real math. Okay, you know your daily energy consumption. Now let's figure out how many solar panels you need to generate that energy. This is where peak sun hours comes in. Peak sun hours isn't how many hours the sun is out. It's the equivalent number of hours per day when solar irradiance averages 1000 watts per square meter. In simpler terms, it's the average amount of good sunlight your panels receive in a day. This varies greatly by your location and the time of year. You can find peak sun hour data for your specific location online. A quick search for average peak sun hours, your city state, will usually get you there. Let's use an average of 4 peak sun hours for our example. So if you need 5000 watt hours per day and you get 4 peak sun hours, 5000 WH divided by 4 hours equals 1250 watts. This 1250 watts would be your ideal panel output if your panels performed perfectly all the time. But they don't. 
we need to account for system losses. These include temperature effects, shading, wiring losses, dust, and degradation over time. A good rule of thumb is to factor in 15 to 25% losses, meaning your system will be about 75 to 85% efficient. Let's use 80% or a loss factor of 0.8 for our calculation. So taking our 1250 watts and dividing by 0 0.8, 1250 W divided by 0 0.8 equals 1562.5 watts. This means you actually need around 1500 to 1600 watts of solar panels to consistently meet your 5000 watt hours daily demand given your peak sun hours and system losses. Section 4. Inverter Sizing now we connect the dots. All right, we've got our required panel wattage, about 1500 to 1600 watts in our example. Now, how does a 3000 watt inverter fit into this? And this is where the mistake happens if you only look at that single number. An inverter's wattage rating like 3000 watts typically refers to its continuous AC output power. This is the maximum power it can consistently provide to your appliances. However, most inverters are designed to handle an oversized solar array on their input side. You'll often see in the inverter specifications a max PV array power or max input power that is significantly higher than its continuous AC output. For a 3000 watt inverter, this might be 4000 watts, 4500 watts, or even 5000 watts of solar panel input. Why is this important? because it allows you to connect more panels than the inverter's output rating, ensuring that even on cloudy days or during non-peak sun hours, you're still producing a substantial amount of power. When your panels produce more than the inverter can handle, the inverter simply clips the excess. It won't be damaged, it just won't utilize that extra power at that moment, but you'll get more power overall throughout the day. The key is to check your inverter specifications for its maximum PV input power and its MPPT voltage and current ranges. This is crucial for properly stringing your panels together, but we'll get to that in a moment. Section 5. Choosing your panels and stringing them correctly. So you need around 1500 to 1600 watts of panels. Now how many individual panels is that? This depends on the wattage of the panels you choose. Solar panels commonly come in wattages like 300 watts, 400 watts, 500 watts, and so on. Let's say we choose 400 watt panels. 1,562.5 watts needed. Divided by 400 watts per panel equals 3.9 panels. You can't have 0 0.9 of a panel, so you'd round up to 4 panels. That gives you 1,600 watts of solar panels, perfectly aligning with our calculated need. Now here's where the other critical mistake happens. Connecting them correctly to your inverter. Solar panels have voltage and current ratings. VOC, VMP, ISC, IMP. Your inverter has a specific MPPT maximum power point tracking input voltage and current range it can handle. If you go outside this range, your system won't work or you could damage your inverter. You'll typically connect panels in series to increase the voltage and then parallel strings to increase the current. You need to ensure the total voltage of your series string stays within the inverter's MPPT voltage window, especially considering temperature coefficients that affect voltage. And the total current from your parallel strings should be within the inverter's max input current. For example, if your 400 watt panels each have a VMP of 40 volts and your inverter's MPPT range is 100 to 450 volts, you could put three panels in series 3 times 40 volts equals 120 volts, which fits perfectly within that range. If you had 4 panels, you'd likely create 2 smaller strings of 2 panels each, and then connect those 2 strings in parallel if your inverter has multiple MPPT inputs, or if it can handle the combined current. Section 6. Battery sizing if applicable. And charge controllers. What about batteries? 
If you're building an off-grid system or want backup power, batteries are essential, and their sizing is also driven by your daily energy consumption. To size your battery bank, you need to consider your daily watt hours, our 5000 watt hours example, days of autonomy. How many days do you want to power your home without sun? Two days for cloudy weather. Battery voltage, e.g. 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts system. Depth of discharge, DoD. How much of the battery's capacity can you use without damaging it? 50% for lead acid, 80 to 100% for lithium. Let's stick with our 5000 watt hours per day. Assume a two day autonomy and a 48 volt lithium battery bank with 80% depth of discharge. 5000 watt hours per day times two days equals 10,000 watt hours total 10,000 watt hours divided by 48 volts equals 208.33 amp hours 208.33 amp hours divided by 0 0.80 equals 260.4. Ah, so you'd need a 48 volt battery bank with at least 260 amp hours of usable capacity. If you have batteries, you'll also need a charge controller. This device sits between your solar panels and your batteries, ensuring the batteries are charged safely and efficiently. MPPT, maximum power point tracking, charge controllers are highly recommended as they are far more efficient than older PWM controllers, especially in larger systems as they can extract up to 30% more power from your panels. Section 7. Real-world scenarios and pro tips. Now let's talk real-world application. You've done the math, but what about those nuances? Remember we talked about oversizing your panels for our 3000 watt inverter, while we calculated a need for 1500 to 1600 watts of panels based on daily consumption. It would be perfectly acceptable and often beneficial to install up to 4000 watts or even 5000 watts of panels if your inverter's max input allows it. This ensures that even on cloudy days, you're still producing good power and you'll maximize the time your inverter is operating at its peak. Yes, you'll experience clipping at peak sun hours, meaning your panels produce more than the inverter can convert. But the overall daily energy harvest will likely be higher this is a common strategy in grid-tied systems to maximize energy production. Here are some extra pro tips. Plan for the future. If you think your energy needs might grow adding an EV charger, consider an inverter with even higher input capacity or one that allows for easy expansion. Shading analysis. Before you install, use a solar pathfinder app or just observe your roof throughout the day to identify any potential shading from trees or other structures. Shading even a small part of a panel can drastically reduce the output of an entire string. Safety First, always follow electrical codes, use proper wire gauges, fuses and breakers. If you're unsure, consult a qualified electrician. Solar energy is powerful. Get quotes If you're not doing a full DIY, get multiple quotes from reputable solar installers. This will give you a good benchmark for costs and system design. The Section 8 Recap and Takeaways Let's quickly recap the correct way to size your solar system and avoid that big mistake. Step 1. Forget the inverter wattage initially. Start by accurately calculating your daily energy consumption in watt hours. This is your foundation. Step 2. Determine your required solar panel wattage by dividing your daily consumption by your local peak sun hours and then accounting for system losses. Step 3. Then Choose an inverter. Ensure its maximum PV input power is equal to or greater than your calculated required panel voltage. Also, make sure your panel stringing series parallel respects the inverter's MPPT voltage and current limits. Step 4. If you need batteries, size them based on your daily consumption, desired autonomy, and battery characteristics. Don't forget your charge controller. By following these steps, you're not just guessing. You're building a solar system that is precisely tailored to your energy needs, maximizes your investment, and avoids the common pitfall of simply matching panel watts to inverter watts. I hope this video has cleared up the confusion around solar system sizing and empowered you to design a more efficient and effective setup. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more solar insights and let me know in the comments below what other solar topics you'd like us to cover.
And remember, every watt hour saved is a watt hour you don't have to generate. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.